Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kai Srona, a bariatric fellow at Tulane. Uh, this morning, I'll be talking about endoscopic submucosal dissection for diagnosis of a gastric mass. I have no relevant financial disclosures. So this is a case of a 67-year-old male who was presented to us with an incidental gastric mass. Uh, he was asymptomatic, had no history of gastrointestinal disorders or uh, cancer. The workup included an EGD, uh, which we performed, demonstrated a 1.5 centimeter submucosal lesion in the distal antrum. Uh, this lesion was biopsied multiple times, although biopsy results were inconclusive. Um, imaging findings that didn't show anything concerning such as lymphadenopathy or metastatic lesions. Uh, so you can see here that he had a significant past med uh, surgical history. He had a history of uh, open cholecystectomy, suffered multiple gunshot wounds to the chest and abdomen, had a sternotomy, x lab multiple bowel resections, colectomy, had a colostomy, which was reversed, so very significant surgical history. So we decided to approach this uh, endoscopically using endoscopic submucosal dissection, or ESD. ESD is a novel endoscopic technique uh, used for the end block resection of benign and early malignant um, gastrointestinal intestinal tumors, sorry. And uh, we'll go through the technique here in detail. So here you can appreciate the mass lesion in the distal stomach. That uh, discoloration is iatrogenic, and you can see that the overlying mucosa is pretty much intact. Uh, for the procedure, we use a standard uh, high-definition gastroscope, attach a cap to the end of the scope, and uh, we have about a 2.8 millimeter working channel. Here we're using the hybrid electrosurgical knife, and what we're doing is marking the perimeter of the lesion. So we do this circumferentially, and what's important is you want to maintain about a one to two millimeter margin of normal tissue between your markings and the actual mass. So once, so once we've marked this circumferentially, uh, what we perform our lift, as you can see here, we perform our lift with diluted methylene blue, but other commercial gels are available. An important technique point here is to perform the lift posteriorly first. Uh, often, if you've perform the lift anteriorly, what happens is you kind of create a hill and it decreases your visualization of the posterior aspect and makes it more difficult. So here we've uh, per performed our posterior lift and we'll perform our anterior lift and you can see that we get a nice lift. Uh, after performing the lift, we use the same device to um, begin our mucosotomy. Here you can see we're uh, performing our mucosotomy and following the previous markings that we made. Importantly here, you want to make sure you don't go too deep as you can cause a full thickness injury. Uh, rate of perforation in ESD ranges between 0 to 4 percent in the literature. And those are mostly retrospective reviews. We continue our mucosotomy on, on the other side and you can see that the submucosal plane is nicely dyed with the methylene blue. We uh, tend to make about a 180 degree uh, mucosotomy. You just want to make it large enough to accommodate the cap of the scope. It's similar technique to, uh, to what you see in a poem. So once uh, the mucosotomy is large enough, you can see that we're uh, basically uh, applying gentle pressure in that submucosal plane. And when you do that, you can, it reveals that nice alveolar submucosal plane and we dissect into that plane there. So you can see with gentle traction that that plane is uh, nicely revealed. The hybrid knife that we use uh, makes the procedure a lot more efficient because there's no need to replace uh, instruments when you're uh, when you're performing your lift and, uh, and and applying cautery. So you can do both functions with the same instrument. So that kind of moves the procedure along nicely, and you can start to see the mass here on the right upper screen. It appears to be a fatty tumor. So it's that same technique we're using here with the kind of blunt traction with the cap and then, uh, and then cauterizing that alveolar tissue. It's not shown in the video here, but we are injecting uh, per, um, uh, methylene blue and performing our lift in, in between. So you can see here we've almost got the entire, entire mass detached from the deep tissue. Once you've got almost uh, uh, the mass almost completely detached, it makes this technique a little more difficult. So you'll see uh, what we tend to do is, is use a snare. So you can see that now it's almost completely detached. What we do is uh, use a hot snare and get to the base of the lesion, and we'll use the hot snare to completely detach it.
So once it's uh, completely detached, we use an endonet to remove the specimen from the gastri uh, gastric uh, lumen. So we tried to um, close that mucosal defect. It proved to be a little more difficult than we had imagined. If it was in the esophagus, you definitely want to close those defects, but in the stomach, um, you can leave it. The patient did uh, excellent postoperatively, no complications. He was discharged on post-op day one, tolerating a clear liquid diet. Um, we have a protocol where we do PPIs and care of fate. Um, he was seen in a uh, clinic two weeks later. Pathology was consistent with a lipomatous tumor. So as you can see, um, ESD is a, is a novel technique used to end block resection of uh, gastrointestinal masses. What's nice is in this case, we avoided a potentially morbid surgery. Um, we haven't explored it yet. Um, it's therapeutic options yet at our institution, but it is the future direction. The Eastern literature shows pretty good outcomes with that. Thank you.